folks. Welcome to Calvin's Guide Game. Today I'm going to continue on telling you games uh, that I played. Uh, last time I did 10 to 15 times. This time I'm going to do 16 to 21. I'll kind of do them in, you know, five uh, intervals, you know, how many. Um, before I get started, though, I want to kind of tell you, you know, somebody says, well, why are you doing that? I don't know, just an idea of telling you uh, what games I play, you know, and some of the games that I play are um, easy to play, fast games, so a lot of those will be on the list. Uh, some of the games that are more um, complicated, more uh, lengthy, you know, take a lot of time, I don't get them to the table as often, but... I play uh, quite a few games. Just wanted to let you know, I actually own 453 games in my collection. Now, that's having to play quite a few games, so I'm going to get them all played. There are some that I don't get to the table. Um, I still have some on my, uh, they call it the shelf of shame. It's the shelf of opportunity. I haven't got them there yet. Um, but I do play about 200 different board games a year. Now, I play more than that. Uh, but I play about 200 different games a year. So I play, what I mean by playing more is I play, you know, some of those games multiple times, but I at least play about 200 different games a year. I don't know if that's a lot, but that's basically for me. I get to play some out of my collection. I play some board games with other folks. I play some from the board game store I go to. Uh, they have a great selection of games that you can just check out and play. There's no cost. So that's a lot of fun. So with all that being said, one more item I got to cover, and that's, hey guys, hit that subscribe button. I sure would appreciate it. And if you hit the like button, it gets us out there, circulate a little more where people can find it um, and get to move up on the whatever the thing is that they talk about for, um, you know, getting getting out there, the folks, the algorithms or whatever it is. I don't know. But anyway, here's the game. Here are the games I played. 16 to 21 times. So in the comments, you guys tell me if you think these games are worth playing 16 to 21 times. And also, what games have you played quite a few times, 16 to 21? Now I'm going to do this in increments of 5. Like I said, I did 10 to 15, 16 to 21, and I'll go 22 to 27. We'll go all the way up. And then when I get to about 50, I'll do 50 plus because I, I don't have that many games that I've played over 50 uh, times. But we're going to get there. All right, so let's start out with games I've played 16 times. And I'm going to put a little deal up in here, uh, a little logo saying these are the games I've played 16 times. So I have to say i played it 16 times over and over again. All right, the first one is Room 25. Guys, I love this game. You guys know it. It was on the top 100. It's in a lot of uh, things that I do, top 10s of this, that, or the other. Um, room 25 is you're trying to escape as a group. Um out of a cube, if you will. It's just a cube. There's an exit on one of the corners, not necessarily the corner, but in one of the three tiles on the corners. You're playing against um, guards. You can play uh, cooperative where everybody's just trying to get out. Usually it's not as much fun as putting in the guards, and you don't know who is who because they're secret roles. You don't know who to trust. You could be pushed into other rooms by other players. And if that room is not turned over or explored, it could be something that kills you instantly. The game is a lot of fun. If you haven't ever played it, room 25, 16 times. The next one is The Rise of Queensdale. Now, I would play this game more than 16 times, but the problem is it was only about 16 times you can play the game. It was a legacy game, and so you're playing it through the process. Rise of Queensdale was a worker placement game. Uh, I picked it up. Me and my wife thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's one of the games we um, we sat down and played, and we left it on the table. And we came back every night. We'd skip a night or something and come back and play. And I'm going to tell you, we'd play a session. Um, and I'm going to tell you, we got to the point where what's going to happen in the Queensdale tonight, right? What, what are we going to go? Uh, what are we going to see? What, what kind of opportunities are we going to have? So the Rise of Queensdale is one of those games. If you ever get a chance to buy it, um, I would say do that. Um, it is fantastic. I enjoyed my, my play of it, my 16 plays of it. Fantastic game. Um, then there's Hot Shots. Hot Shots I've played 16 times as well. Hot Shots, you are a... 
fire person, you know, you're putting out fires, you're a fireman, you're a tower guy, watch, whatever these people are. I can't think of all the fire names that they have for the characters. But you're trying to put out the fire so it doesn't burn up t- so many tiles. If you burn up so many tiles, it's a cooperative game, and if you burn up so many tiles, you lose the game. I played this one a lot because my friend Kyle really enjoys this game, so when he was around, we got to play it more often. I don't play it as much anymore, but Hot Shots I've played 16 times. <clears throat> this next one is Dig Down Dwarf. Dig Down Dwarf was probably one of the first Kickstarters I backed once I discovered Kickstarter, and I backed it. It's relatively cheap. Uh, to back and so I said I'll give it a try I've never done this before I'll see kind of how it goes Uh, turns out my family really liked it it's a family weight game you're rolling dice to get certain gems um, out of the middle and you're trying to be the dwarf that has the most gems at the end of the game it's a lot of fun um, but when you pick a, a gem that you're rolling for you have to either complete it or you don't you know you'll fail and you're rolling dice to get pairs or straights or something like that uh, maybe even four of a kind to get certain um, certain gems it is a lot of fun it's quick it's fast it's family friendly so dig down dwarf I really enjoyed I played it 16 times the next one is dice of crowns I actually backed this on Kickstarter and because I had such a good experience with dig down dwarf I said well I'll give another one a shot and I back Dice Crowns. Dice Crowns is a fast game to where you're uh, rolling dice, you're trying to get the crown, you're trying to keep the crown, and you're trying to uh, not get knocked out of the game. I played Dice of Crowns 16 times. It is really fast. If you think about like left, center, right, it's kind of in that same line. Just, you know, you got swords and you got other things that you're doing. But I really enjoyed it and I played it 16 times. The next one is Above and Below. Now, you guys know I love Ryan Lockett games, and Above and Below is probably my favorite. Um, Above and Below, I played 16 times. This game is just amazing. To me, I enjoy it. There's lots of ways to win. You can collect buildings. You can uh, go on quest. That's the Below quest. You can uh, get items that you can put down to the bottom of your board to score more points. There's cards that have in-game scoring on them. There's cards that just give you straight-up victory points. It's a worker placement game to where you're, I say, yeah, you got workers and you kind of slide them over on your board to tell them to do what they're going to do. You can harvest. You can just go send them out for miscellaneous work and get money. Um, You can explore, but you have to have two of them to do that into the caverns. You can set harvest. You can build and you can recruit different uh, people to come into your uh, community, your your uh, area. And to do that, though, you've got to have beds for them to sleep before you can use them. So if they, they come in exhausted, and if you don't have enough beds, you can't move them over to use them. Above and Below is fantastic. I enjoyed it a lot. I played it 16 times. <clears throat> now... Let's get to, oh, I got one more 16-time game. I played 16 times. That's Five Alive. Five Alive is a fast card game that you have a live spelled out in front of you. Um, You're trying not to let the pile in the middle go over 21, and if you can't bring it down or not go over 21, you're going to turn one of those over, uh, one of your alive uh, cards over. And if you take all of them out, then you're no longer alive. You're out of the game. Um, this game is quick, it's fun, and you can really upset some folks when they, you know they don't have the next person that plays after you, and you know they don't have anything to bring it down under 21, and there's a card that goes right up to 21, and they'll have to flip another one over. And if you go out, if you get rid of all your cards, everyone has to turn over one of theirs except for you. So it's, kind of, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's kind of a take on Uno. You're, you're trying to get rid of your cards, just like Uno. Uh, But I enjoy it so much. It's such a great game. My family enjoyed it. That's why we played it 16 times. Now, I must stipulate that I really didn't start, I probably played it more than 16 times, really didn't start marking how many plays I had until about 2015. So before then, 
we probably played at Five Alive a lot more than that. But here we go. All right, so the next grouping is uh, games I've played 17 times. One, The next one is Swap. Swap is a card game to where you're trying to get rid of all your cards. Again, this is a card shedding game, and you can swap hands. You can get all the hand, cards in, redeal them out to everyone, starting with the player to your left, so you may end up with less cards. Um, you're making people draw cards. You're trying to um, play in a, an order. Uh, the game is a lot of fun. If you haven't ever played Swap, I think it's out of print, possibly. But it is a lot of fun. That's Swap. The next one is Roll For It. Roll For It I've played 17 times as well. Roll For It, I think everybody's probably seen this game. you got cards in the middle. You're going to roll some dice. You'll allot those cards or those dice to those cards and you'll leave them there. Sometimes you'll have to have like three threes or and a couple of twos or all fives, all sixes or whatever. So you're trying to allocate your dice to these cards so that you'll roll the dice to be able to get those cards. But those dice have to stay there so you may end up only rolling two dice on your next turn and you may not get to put it out to anything because all your dice are tied up into one deal and you're trying to roll a certain number. So. Roll for it is a fun little game. I mean, it's not going to be a, a mind boggler or anything like that. But to pass time, it is a lot of fun and it's quick to play. The next one that I've played 17 times is Llama or Don't Get Llama, I think it is. Or Don't Get Llama. Um, this card game is also a card shedding game. A lot of card shedding games here in the middle. Um, you're putting down cards. You've you have to either play the same card or one higher. And if you don't have anything to play, you got to draw a card. Um, now, to get rid of your llamas, you have to play them on a six. And then you can play a one on a llama. It's the only time you can play a one unless it's, you know, one that you're playing on top of. And you can only play a llama on a six. And whoever goes out, you got to count up points in your hand. Uh, llamas are like worth 10 points, I think, and then you, if you have multiple cards of the same kind, like two fives, you only count one of them. So you earn chips, little chips, poker, well, not poker chips, but little black or white chips. Blacks are worth five uh, or ten, and the uh, little white ones are worth one point. So, but if you go out, you get to give a chip back. It can be a black one or a white one. So, even though you may catch, get caught with a couple of, of uh, higher hands, uh, you could possibly get rid of those chips if you go out. Now, whoever I think gets to 40 points loses the game, and whoever has the fewest wins. All right, game I played 18 times is Pina Pirata. Pina Pirata, once again, a card shedding game. Uh, but in this one, there's a little bit of difference. You have these little tiles that are out in the middle. You start with two, and there's certain rules that you follow with these little cute animals, pirate animals, that you have to obey. Um, so if you play a card and it says if you play a, a, a monkey card, then you get to give a card to the player on your left or something. Um, but when you go out, you get to pick two tiles off of this stack of tiles. One you'll put in as a new rule, and you'll have up to four rules at one time. And then the other you place down in front of you. They have these little partial red X's on one corner. And when you complete an X, is like where the treasure is, you win. So you have to get four of those tiles to be able to do that. Pinion Power Ride is a lot of fun. Enjoy it. And it's a good family weight game, good family uh, game for sure. All right, games I've played 19 times. I only played uh, Pena Party. I had one for 18. So here's games I've played 19 times. Super Mega Lucky Box. Super Mega Lucky Box is a card flip game, and you write flip card. You know, it's a flip and write game. You're trying to complete bingo-style little cards, and you earn points by doing that, and you play four rounds of it, so however many bingo cards you do the first time, you put up there and you multiply that by whatever it is. Um, and then you'll get points for how many X's you have left on your cards that you didn't complete at the end of the game. How many moons that you had, you'll get whoever has the most gets so many points, whoever has the least gets negative points. 
and then there are uh, other things of that nature that you can score points for. It's a pretty neat little game. My wife really likes it. You'll X out things, and if you X out in a pat, you know, a, a cross, there's a bonus on some of them. You'll get to circle it and mark off something on another card or the same card. It's a lot of fun. Super Meggy, Super Meggy, Super Mega Lucky Box is a lot of fun. I played it 19 times. I played Shadow Run Crossfire 19 times. In this game, I really don't know how to describe this game. You're trying to beat bad guys and trying to get to the ending, the end bad guy. And it's pretty hard. You've got to work together. It's a cooperative game. And it's kind of a deck builder as well. I think you're getting some cards. Uh, if you earn enough points, you'll get some different cards. Shadowrun Crossfire is a lot of fun. I played it 19 times. Um, it's been a while since I played it, so it's kind of escaping me a little bit. I need to get it back to the table because I do did really enjoy it, and I still do. Um, I want to get it back to the table as soon as possible. The next one is Rook. Now, I know I've played Rook more than 19 times. I used to play this when I was a teenager with some other uh, friends uh, of my parents. Uh, they weren't too older than I was, you know, my friends, my parents would be friends with some younger, a younger couple. We used to play this on a Friday or Saturday night. So uh, I know I played Rook more than 19 times. Now, Rook is a trick-taking game. Absolutely love trick-taking games. Um, you play, a, you put five cards out in this, this thing called the nest. When you're dealing, you have a group of cards. Whoever has the highest bid gets the nest. You take five cards out of your hand, put it back in the nest, and you get to call trump, right? So when you call trump, it's just like hearts or spades. The trump is the highest set. And the rook card, which is a bird, is the highest card of that suit. So you'll just play tricks until you get uh, enough, you know, everybody goes out and you bid. And if you make your bid, you get it. And if you don't, you go set, which you subtract those points. So there's 120 points to get in the game. Uh, the Rook is worth 20, 14s are 10, 10s are 10s, and 5s are 5. So that's the only scoring cards in the game. So you better make sure that you can catch all those. And if you put count the, some of those count cards in the nest, if you don't catch the last trick, those cards go to your opponent. So it's a fun game. I enjoyed a lot. Rook, I played 19 times. Here's one that I played 19 times. Not a fan of it, but I played Phase 10 Dice 19 times. I play this game because my wife enjoys it and my mom. And I'm sure if I played it with my aunts and uncles, they would enjoy it as well. So Phase 10 Dice, you're rolling. It's almost like Phase 10, the card game. But in this one, you're rolling. You have to get a certain something uh, on your dice roll. You have three rolls to try to do it. Um, if you don't... You, you pass that turn, you don't get to ride it, you don't get to go on to the next system. So whoever gets enough points uh, wins the game, but it's the first one that gets through all the things that you have to do gets a bonus. So whoever has the highest score at the end of the game wins the game. All right, Pathfinder Rise of the Rune Lords I played 19 times as well. I like Pathfinder. Pathfinder is a deck builder adventure game to where you're going through these locations, trying to find a bad guy, trying to trap him in a location so you can actually kill him or get rid of him. Um, the game is a lot of fun. You get to add certain things. So when you're going to these locations, it may be a treasure. You get to roll dice to see if you meet the, the deal to be able to bring the treasure into your hand. Uh, the cards are your life. Your deck is your life. When you run out of cards... You 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 uh, are, are you lose the game right? You die, lose the game, whatever it is. Pathfinder, Rise of the Rune Lord, what a great game! I played 19 times. Muir Tombs, I played 19 times. This little game is a card shedding game as well, where you play cards. Uh, Lupita, Rosita, uh, I can't think of all the names, but you play these cards and they do certain things. So. Um, if you play a Lupita, you have to play a Lupita card or the same number. So it goes around until you can't play, and then if you can't play, you have to draw. So the game's a lot of fun. It's just a card-shedding game. i played it 19 times. We've had quite a few card-shedding games on this list. So it's very fast, a lot of fun. It's a good filler game if you want something to do. You have to have three people to play this game. I don't own the game, but we played a lot at the game 
uh, store that I go to. So, Muir Tunes. The next one I played 19 times is Dracari's Dice. Now, Dracari's Dice, I picked up because it was really cheap. Um, you're rolling dice, you got to get these flames, you're trying to get dragons and all this kind of stuff. It's almost like left, center, right as well. Um, I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't recommend picking it up. It's it's an okay game. It's a filler game. I played it 19 times. Probably won't get it to the table any more than that, but that's where it is. And you just roll dice, and you're either uh, getting rid of dice because you can't, you know, if you roll a certain thing, you have to get rid of them, and you're trying not to run out of dice, basically. Drakari's Dice. I played it 19 times. Next game I played, these are the games I played 20 times. Uh, I played Push 20 times. Push is a cool little car game. It is a uh, definitely a filler game. You have this stack of cards, and you have number cards with numbers and colors. If you turn, if you turn over a card, you're going to place it in one of three rows. In these rows, on your turn, you're only doing it on your turn, you can't have the same number or the same color in the rows. So if you turn up certain color or whatever, you can put it in the second row or the third row. But like I said, you can't have the same number or the same color in the rows or you bust. But you can stop it any time you want. There are these roll dice uh, cards that go in there too. And there's also cards that switch how uh, the order or the, the way it goes. So, you know, usually you're going clockwise. It can rotate it backwards and rotate it back clockwise depending on the card you pull. Um, so when you decide to stop, you take the row of cards that you want. You divide them out to the colors in front of you. And you're going to score points that way. You score the face value point on the cards. Um, if you have to roll the dice for a penalty and it comes up, it's got colors on the dice. Or it also has a, a star, which you're safe. So if you roll uh, the dice and it says get rid of all your red cards and you lose all the red cards. But on your turn, you can do a bank action if you have a lot of a certain color. And you can bank those cards and you can turn them over and you can never lose those cards. Those cards will be yours to score at the end of the game for the rest of the game. It's a fun little game. It's fast. It's enjoyable. You're kind of hoping. So if, if if I take a row of cards, the next person gets to choose a row and then the next person, depending on if you have one, two, or three rows. So if you only make one row and you stop, then you're the only one getting a card. If you make two rows, the next person gets one. If you make three rows, the next person. So it goes around the table like that. So that was Push I played 20 times. The next one I played 20 times is Hostage Negotiator. Really enjoy Hostage Negotiator. It's no longer in my collection because I got Final Girl. Final Girl and Hostage Negotiator about the same except for uh, I think Final Girl does it a little better. But in Hostage Negotiator, you're a hostage negotiator trying to talk down a person that's taken hostages. Um, and there are some... Uh, different themes in there that some people may not like. I think there's one where there's a, a person that holds a hospital hostage because his son needs an operation or something like that. And so it's it's interesting game and how you negotiate that. You're trying to save the hostages. Um, you do it by doing cards and you have so much time that you can do it in that you're using for to buy cards uh, to add to your hand to hopefully. And you roll dice and if you roll bad bad things are going to happen. If you're real good, you'll possibly talk down the hostage or the nego uh, the bad guy, and you'll be a great hostage negotiator. It's a lot of fun. It's a great game. Uh, Van Ryder Games makes it. It is actually really good. A hostage negotiator I've played 20 times. Let's get to my 21. Games I've played 21 times. Secret Hitler. Now, I know a lot of people are turned off by the theme of Secret Hitler. You're trying to kill Hitler, but the game is once again, is a party game. It's a lot of fun. You have secret roles as the president. You get to pick your chancellor. The chancellor uh, is, you start out as picking a couple of roles and you give it to the next person and that, or you pick three um, votes. And so you pick one of the, or you throw one away and you pass the other two to the person beside you, they have to pick a vote. The vote can either be for the bad folks or for the good folks. 
Um, and it can make you look like a traitor in this game, and the person that passed it to you gave you no choice but to pick a bad uh, decision. So uh, the president. So the president could be a bad person, could be Hitler, for all you know. And so he could give you the bad things that you have to vote on. It's a great game. It's a lot of tension on who's the bad guy, who's the good people. Um, but it can make you look like a bad guy, even though you're not. Secret Hitler, a lot of fun. Played it 21 times. Pandemic. I played Pandemic 21 times. Pandemic was a, a game for me when it came out, the cooperative game. I was all in. It's probably one of the first games I bought for my collection, that and Betrayal House on the Hill. So those couple of games were my first picks. But Pandemic was, for me, uh, the cooperative game that I, I wanted to bring to my kids and my family to play. And we played it. I probably played it more than 21 times, like I said. But I really enjoy this game. You're going around trying to eradicate diseases or cure diseases and hopefully eradicate them uh, before time runs out. There's three ways to lose and only one way to win. And I enjoy that in, in cooperative games. You, It's a tense moment as long as everybody's working together. The only problem with Pandemic is someone could definitely be an alpha gamer. I try to keep that down in my games where I say, you know what, let them make their own decisions. You do whatever you feel that is going to help this game move on. And if they make a wrong decision, they learn from that. And they'll, they'll play the game a little bit different next time. I think that's the way to handle cooperative games. Don't be that person that says, oh, if you'll go here, I'll go here, I'll do that. Hey, it's, it's okay to plan, okay? But don't plan everybody's turn. I don't like that. And I don't think it's a good gaming experience for other people. That's just me. So I played Pandemic 21 times. Enjoy it. It's a great game. Another game I played 21 times is Knights of Glory. Knights of Glory, um, it's a Blue Gear games uh, game, and it's about bluffing and push your luck. So you're, you have cards in your hand. You're moving through this dungeon. You roll dice. And if you have the cards in your hand to match the dice that you rolled, you only roll so many dice for each level you're going through. So if you have those cards, you can push your luck to keep going. But if someone calls your bluff, uh, they can stop you from moving further. Knights of Glory is a lot of fun. It's a great filler game. Um, and it, it's a gamery game as well. I enjoy Knights of Glory. If you hadn't played it, go check it out. Go find it. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. If you like bluffing and you like push your luck, that game's for you. Knights of Glory. My last game I played 21 times is Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter, as you can see, I have a little poster back there that I made. I just absolutely love Dead of Winter. Um, this game, you're going out, exploring locations, trying not to get bit by a zombie because it can be devastating for your colony. Um, you're trying to feed everybody in the colony. Um, you've got a daily task you have to do. You have a requirement that you have to do if you play it that way. And there could possibly be a traitor trying to ruin the whole thing. Um, I like this game a lot. It's a lot of fun. Now, I play it sometimes without a traitor, and I play it sometimes without the secret objectives. This game's hard enough without secret objectives. Um, I think the secret, leaving the secret objectives out makes the game more fun for newer players. Once people have played it a couple times and we want to work those secret objectives in, that's perfect. But you can win the game but not meet your secret objective, so you lose. I don't like that. Um, I understand why they did it in the game, but I'm not a fan. I feel if we all won, we won. Um, we beat the scenario. I don't want to have to have a secret uh, goal that I have to do or an objective where I have to hoard food and I got people starving in the in the colony. I don't like that. So we a lot of times play without those secret objectives. And once people have played the game enough times, we say, hey, do you want to work these secret objectives in? It makes the game a little harder. You sometimes may have to make harder decisions on what you want to do, whether you want to help the colony or not. And I think that's that makes the game fun as well. And I also play without the trader sometimes for first-time players. But later on, I say, hey, let's work in a trader. Someone may be betraying us. You know, we don't know. 
but with those secret objective cards, it kind of makes it look like everybody's a traitor if you're not helping out, not giving uh, to the cause of the daily whatever it is we have to do, whether it's getting more food, more medicine, fuel, whatever. But I love Dead of Winter. I played the game 21 times. Guys, let me know what you played uh, 15 to 21 times I'd lo- or 16 to 21 times. I'd love to hear it. And I'd also like your opinion on, hey, should some of these games have been played more? Should some of these games not even been played at all? I doubt that because a lot of these games are great games. Uh, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate you watching. Hit that subscribe button for me. And like I always say, get a board game to the table. Spend time with friends and family. And I do thank you for watching Calvin's Guide Game.